think it was Monday, it was early in the week, I expressed a simple sentiment on Twitter that a lot of you noticed and a lot of you asked about, so I was going to address it on the Late Kick Extra podcast and tonight. And I just said, after several weeks of negativity and negative vibes, I just felt some positive vibes towards football season, pro and college. Felt some positive vibes over the weekend, talking to some folks in decision-making positions, and I just tweeted it out. Because, you know, I, I like to keep a pretty fair stream of consciousness out there, and you respond, and that's how I interact with you guys during the week, at Late Kick Josh on Twitter if you want to follow, and I would ask that you do that, by the way. But you wanted me to explain what I meant by that. So let me go into not too much depth right quick, but I just give you some feedback from what we've been hearing, very fluid situations like trying to nail jello to the wall. Perception's not reality. And that's what I've been imploring you to do. You'll notice we haven't taken definitive statements. Colin, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think we've taken a single definitive hardline stance on this because we are smart enough to know we're not experts in this field. I, some would argue we're not even experts in the field of college football, but we're certainly not experts in the field of infectious disease. We're not in the rooms when the decisions are being made. We don't know the data that other decision makers have been privy to. But here's what you can know. What you can know is common sense. The way we just described ourselves also describes a lot of decision makers out there, which circles back to the 595 rule that we have been repeating ad nauseum on late kick. And the 595 rule in principle at this point really is 95% are just sitting around and waiting for someone else to do something. No one wants to make the first move. And there are a relatively small group. There's a relatively small group of decision makers that are making the initial moves. And then a wave, 95 plus percent of folks, they just follow. That's why I've told you a lot of the negativity has been a virtual mirage. This could be redundant. A mirage. And it's because when the few go that way, everyone just follows. And so... The few may take a pessimistic approach and everyone else just follows. Well, if you'll notice, as we get closer to what is supposed to be the start of the season, there have been a few things that started to reverse course. As I told you, I expected to happen. And I'll tell you some things that are happening. Our high school associations in some states are announcing either a slightly delayed start to a season, like they're going to do in Georgia, but play the entirety of the year or start on time and try and play the entirety of the year like they're doing in the state of Alabama. You've got uh, programs like Alabama that you see reports of trying to schedule Brigham Young, not for the end of the year, for the beginning of the year. I've seen today a lot of other reports. These are unconfirmed because that's what they are right now. It's whispers, things people are working on about locking down out-of-conference competition for the beginning of the year. You've got programs that are pushing forward, getting ready to open camp. You've had some very positive testing numbers that have come back from a lot of places after initially it looked nightmarish. The more you've had guys in a controlled environment on campus, you've seen similar results to what you've seen with Major League Baseball once they've had guys in controlled environments, the NBA once they've had guys in controlled environments, and to repeat what we've said all along, sadly, I guess you could say, a lot more of the decision-making process is being predicated on public relations and perception than data and numbers. I'm not saying data and numbers aren't being adhered to. I'm not saying they're not being paid a lot of attention. I'm telling you that is not the end-all be-all here. And so a lot of folks in decision-making positions have sat around. I can't blame them. I'd probably be in the same boat. And they have just hoped and prayed for some positivity that they can hitch their wagon to as an excuse to get the season started. I think you've started to see some of that, and that in turn is why you looked around and you said, what was that? Does anyone else feel that? Does anyone else smell that? It just feels like a little bit of positivity. Not a lot. We don't have anything determined. Things could go south tomorrow. Things could go south in five minutes. But I do feel a little bit of positivity. And so those are the things. There's nothing hidden. There's nothing I've got up my sleeve that I don't know or you don't know that I'm just keeping from you. But I think if you just sit back and hold tight, still got a couple of weeks here, you're probably going to hear some stuff from the SEC sooner rather than later. You'll get a more definitive idea of how we're supposed to approach a scheduling format. I also would implore you to remember... There are a lot of inaccuracies in reporting out there. I guess partly it's accurate. Partly the concern for college football is, well, it's very hard to marry up everyone's health standards and protocols. And that's true. But here's what's also true. When I had a project back in the day that I knew was due in a week, I was a procrastinator. 
I couldn't have cared less about it. If it's due in a week, if we're today, July 23rd, if it's due July 30th, I'm not paying a bit of attention to it. There's no urgency. But if it was due July 24th, then everything's out the window and I'm doing whatever it takes to get it done, usually the night before it's due. Same thing's gonna happen with testing protocols and procedures and how you handle contact tracing. Everybody's got a different opinion. Watch and see what I tell you. Magically, from the Power 5 standpoint at least, a majority will fall in line just in time and you'll get some announcements just in time the night before you're supposed to have the project turned in. That's essentially the way I see this playing out. So, say all that to say, still be brave enough to admit you don't know what you don't know. See a lot of you out there making fools of yourself right now. I'm just telling you, we don't know. So we're gonna sit back on this one. We're not at the forefront. We're not breaking any news necessarily on this. If you wanna follow some of the best reporting that's been done on this, our Brandon Marcello has done an excellent job at that. I have read everything. I've read every word that he has written on this and will continue to do so. And then there are some other high profile writers out there um, that I have really not valued the opinion of very much on this issue for obvious reasons.